in this section we're going to discuss simplifying rational expressions. As a reminder, a rational expression is, um, well, we'll talk about rational number expressions and rational expressions dealing with polynomials. We simplify them the same way. For example, when you first learned how to simplify the fraction 12 over 20, this is a rational number where the num because it's a fraction of integers and the denominator is not equal to zero. Well, you learned to simplify this. I'm going to actually do the prime factorization of this. 12 is 2 times 2 times 3. 20 is 2 times 2 times 5. Once you were able to come up with the factors of the numerator and the denominator, any factor divided by itself is 1. So those, in your terms, canceled. They, they, you just need to remember that that's a 1. Okay? Any number divided by itself is 1. Okay? And then I'm left with 3. Is 1 times 1 times 1 is 3, and 1 times 1 times 5 is 5, would be 3 fifths. Okay, you may have directly thought of this as 4 times 3 over 4 times 5, and got to the 3 fifths. You could have mentally done this work in your head. What numbers, the biggest number in common between 12 and 20, that would be 4. 12 divided by 3. I mean, 12 divided by 4 is 3, 20 divided by 4 is 5. But that's the same process that you are doing, whether you're doing it mentally, doing complete prime factorization, finding a common factor, and canceling. You're doing the same thing. Well, the same applies to simplifying rational functions. If I want to simplify, uh, actually we'll call it expressions, I want to simplify the expression x squared plus 4x minus 12 over 3x minus 6. I want to simplify this. The first step to simplification is going to be to come up with the factors of the numerator, then the factors of the denominator, and then figure out what cancels. So I want to factor, and I'm going to write n sub x for the numerator's polynomial d sub x for the denominator's polynomial, and then we are going to cancel out like factors. Okay. If I cancel out something in the denominator, I need to remember that because like when we did the domain of rational functions, the domain is all real numbers except what makes the denominator zero. If I end up crossing something out of the denominator, I have to take that into account, and you're going to see that in the example. So step one is to factor the numerator. Two numbers that multiply to negative 12 that add to 4, and that would be a positive 6 and a negative 2. So I'd have x plus 6 times x minus 2. Then I want to factor out the greatest common factor here. Well, I have a 3 that I can pull out of both terms. And that would be 3 times 3x divided by 3 is x. Negative 6 divided by 3 is minus 2. Now I want to cancel out my like factors. Well, my like factors are the x minus 2. But I need to remember that. We're going to see where that comes into play. So my final answer is going to be what's left in the numerator over what's left in the denominator provided that x is not going to equal 2. What's going to cause this part to blow up is when this is equal to 0. So x is not equal to 2. Notice that you don't realize that you're going to divide by 0 if you put a 2 in when you have it in the simplified form. You need to take that into account when you are simplifying these rational expressions. Okay, I am going to do one more example, and then we will, um, you use this, simplifying rational expressions, anytime that you are going to multiply, divide, 
add or subtract rational expressions. First thing you're going to want to do is get it into factored form so you can work on the simplification process. So that's where this is going to come into play in future lessons and units. So let's do one more practice problem. 4x plus 12 over x squared minus 3x minus 18. x squared minus 3x minus 18. I want to factor the numerator. Greatest common factor between 4 and 12 is 4. 4x divided by 4 is x. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Two numbers that multiply to negative 18 that add to negative 3 would be negative 6 and positive 3. I then want to cancel out like terms and then rewrite my answer taking into account what I crossed off in the denominator is no longer a valid value of x. So x could not be equal to a negative 3 because a negative 3 is going to cause me to divide by 0 in my original form of that rational expression. Um, make sure that you practice these. If you need to remember how to factor any of these things, please go back and look at the factoring videos that were already assigned this year.